Hey, ladies, welcome. If you're uh, if you're live with us today, or if you're listening later, we we love this group. We say that every time, but we do. We we just there's something that happens when you have a group of just women that are wanting so much to just lead their lives in a Christ-centered way, and all of us are bumping into real life. And so, anyway, it's so awesome to do that together. So we're so. Um, just so happy that you'll join with us in whatever way you can. And so Debbie, lots of you know Debbie from this class, but Debbie is, she might not share all this, but Debbie's a, she's a life coach and she um, does some work there. And she also works a ton behind the scenes for mothers who know, helping to get out all the information, making uh, like uh, the things that go on our YouTube channel and helping to put our podcast together and get them out. And so anyway, Debbie has some, just some, her fingers in some awesome things that, but a lot of it's behind the scenes. And so it's always fun to hear from, uh, from Debbie and just her ex life experience. And, and she's got a beautiful way of sharing things. So excited to have you share today, Debbie. So for, um, those of you here or listening, uh, please just know we have a lot of people that join us just all the time. And so we like to make sure people know who we are. And then also just feel free to share this training at any time. It's just an open, uh, what do you call that? Open registration. People can join at any time this training. And it's such a good general uh, one to share. So we are Mothers Who Know. Mothers Who Know is an online faith-filled gathering place for moms of all ages and stages just to come and have a place to find connection and support and training and we love to say and hope and that hope piece is because we strive so much to have the savior be a part of what we do because we know he does add the hope piece and so that's something that means a lot to us and and we we see that happening and that's that's because of him. And so we love that. So uh, we we offer this training and then also another group that meets at 11 o'clock called Warrior Mothers who know that we like to we like to spotlight. That's a special meeting as well. We'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Uh, we are, um, this program is offered through life-changing services and we love being teamed up with them and the things that, uh, all the beautiful resources that they provide and offer. These are some of them. I'm just going to uh, list them or name them because I know lots of people that listening don't see this slide, but some of the programs that they offer, uh, the Sons of Helaman program, the Minamaroni program, the Worth program, uh, the Mothers Who Know program, this one, um, and then also Daughters of Light and Warrior Women of Light, and then also several different marriage repair helps. And so just go to lifechangingservices.org and... Uh, our families are, are, are in need of a little extra help sometimes. And these programs are ones that can be just a great help there. Today's lesson is titled notice, just notice, and it's lesson three in the mom power training. And, um, this quote from the training, notice how you are changing for the better and looking at things differently one day at a time, one step at a time, one minute at a time. All right, Debbie. Okay, I am so excited to be here today. It's so awesome to get to study and um, go through these lessons from a different perspective and the perspective of when you're going to present instead of just so comfortably sitting there listening. Um, I am an eternal warrior coach, and these lessons actually did come from the Eternal Warriors program. However, Karen has um, written in her genius to the lessons that speak more really to women's hearts. So it's kind of fun to like cross over and see the genius in play there that she's done. So because I am not Karen in the genius that she does, I've combined over some Eternal Warriors with the lesson that she has. So if you've been here before, it's going to be a little bit different, but that's okay. Cause we can learn a little differently. 
And um, yes, it's true. I have brought in a special expert that will make three appearances. So be ready. It's a surprise. Okay, let's get started. The lesson today is notice, just notice. So what are we noticing? That's what we're going to talk about. Um, a variety of things. In the Eternal Warrior program, at the beginning of every lesson, we want to get so that we have the part of our brain that's functioning, that's working at the best level is in the front lobe of our brain. And we want to do that because then that helps us so that we're able to receive and have critical thinking and be creative and build the spirit, all of those things. So when we first enter into a class, sometimes we have all these other things going on in our mind and we might be in a, having a pain point. We might be feeling really agitated. We might be feeling all kinds of things but we want to try to get us to the front lobe of the brain because that's where we're going to learn at the best level. So the questions that are always asked, which Karen's asked them many times, um, I'm going to go through them because we're going to hit them throughout the lesson today. But what is so cool is at General Conference, I heard a question um, asked a different way. So that's the question I'm going to ask you ladies today the same way that it was presented at conference. So the normal questions that we would normally go through is, why are you fighting or what are you fighting for? Why are you fighting and why don't you just give up? So we can all figure out how that is, right? Like, why am I even fighting? Because sometimes it seems like so dismal around here that I do kind of want to give up. But why is mothers or why... Are, why do you, as a mother, why are you not giving up? Why do you just keep fighting? Think about that. So in the last week, if you think about um, how did you win your most recent battle, and that could be an interaction with a child, a spouse, um, someone out in the world, at the school, in your work, wherever, how did you win when you were challenged? What did you do right when you were winning? This is so important. Um, are you keeping a girl power journal? And that's just writing down thoughts or inspirations. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the one that came up in conference. Why do I walk a covenant path? We know President Nelson keeps saying, stay on the covenant path, stay on the covenant path. Well, why do I walk a covenant path? That's the question. So when you think about that, why do you walk a covenant path? If you know straight out of the chute why you do, like that came right to your mind, will you put it in the chat? And if through the lesson you start to have that come like, oh, I walk the covenant path because blah, 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 put it in the chat and we'll read them at the end. So why do I walk a covenant path? It's just a different way to say, why, what are you fighting for? And why don't you just give up? Why are you doing that? So why do I walk a covenant path? Another way that you can think, which we're going to go through this also, is when you lost, what technique did the enemy use to defeat you? Is there a pattern that he uses? Because he knows us, right? What is the lie that influences you that you believe? And last week, we talked about not every thought in your uh, mind is a trusted thought, right? So what is the thought that he can drop into your mind that you believe? That's the lie that we want to start identifying. And then prophesy into next week. What strategies can we do? What will Satan do? And how can I remember to notice if I have the spirit and to go get that spirit? Okay, those are the things we're going to cover. So let's go through some truths. So BJ, go ahead and read this first truth. Okay, this is from Bonnie Corden. Uh, she says, remembering love can push away confusion in a world that can blind you of your potential. Yes, you are here for something grand. I joined President Nelson who said, the Lord needs you. As you accept and follow his will, you will find yourself accomplishing the impossible. Mm -hmm. So I love that so much. Remembering love can push away confusion. In this world, I think if we look in the outside world, there's a lot of confusion and chaos, right? And 
um, sometimes it makes us feel all kinds of certain not happy ways, confused and scared and fear and all of those things. So remembering love can push that away. Love of what? Well, in this case, it's love of ourself um, and love that the Savior has for us. So I love that it says the Lord needs you as you accept and follow his will. You will find yourself accomplishing the impossible. I think that gives us a lot of hope. Susan, when Susan, here's Susan Porter. When you know and understand how completely you are loved as a child of God, it changes everything. How you feel about yourself how you feel in difficult situations, the view of your circumstances, the view of others, your capacity to make a difference. In this lesson, Karen likes to talk a lot about peace is an increased skill, not a change in circumstance. So your capacity to view your circumstance differently, it doesn't necessarily change the circumstance, but your view changes as you feel the love of your savior and the love of self and you feel empowered in um, the trust that the lord has you and as he sees you in that situation even um so here is one of my little special surprises and it is karen and she's talking about what we need when we're in those spots or when we see someone else in a spot that's a difficult circumstance and we need people to to accept and love us right where we are and we need hope when we've been unable to find hope because of hard things in our life um, when we can shine light on those things it's amazing how peace becomes an increased skill not a change in circumstance just because we shine light on something doesn't mean that it, the hard thing goes away but it means we can clean out the mold and the cobwebs and actually see what's there and start breathing better but that's just such a huge principle when we can look at things and have the courage to look at it and when we can reach out and ask for help some really cool things can happen in our life I love that so much. Um, it just helps us to remember that we're not alone and that we can have people. I, I know that in this room, in the Zoom room, um, I'll bet almost all of us, if not all of us, can testify that the storms don't often go away very quickly. And yet it's so miraculous how we can feel peace right in the middle of the storm. So if we can just notice and remember, notice how we're feeling, that's going to be so key to fighting the battle when we're in the storm, is noticing how we're feeling, noticing do we feel the spirit, noticing do we remember who we are, noticing are we believing a lie. And there's ways that we can do, we can learn that. Notice, just notice, we want to go in and we want to claim the power that we can receive through Jesus Christ. We've been given promises and blessings that we can be successful here. Didn't say easy, right? We're in the battle. The war still is here. But we have power because we yoke ourselves with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we want to notice, are we doing that? Are we going in there and claiming that power? Because when we stand with him, of course we can feel peace because then we have increased faith. We have increased courage. We have increased determination. So this might be a time when if thoughts are going to your head and into your mind and heart, why do you walk the covenant path? Why do you keep fighting? That would be a time. Put it in the chat. Notice a willing mind. Behold, the Lord requi requireth the heart and a willing mind. We don't have to go run a marathon. We need to have our heart and our willing mind. And the willing mind and obedient shall eat uh, the good of the land. There, that is a priceless promise. As you continue to center your mind and heart in him, he will help you have a rich and full life, no matter what happens in the world around you. 
no matter what happens to those that we love in our family, we can notice, we can claim that power, have the increased faith that the Lord's about the business and about the saving. When we notice and know that and we claim that power, we can stand still and know that he is God and we're okay. And we want to keep our minds open so that we can feel the spirit. So if he needs us to go into battle, to say something, to be present in a certain way, we're ready to go because we're noticing that we need to have the spirit with us always. We notice when it, when we can't feel and we always want to notice when we do feel. Okay. If he have faith, he said, nothing shall be impossible unto you. We love President Nelson so much. He says, focus is required. The Lord said, look unto me in every thought. That special vision will also help clarify your wishes when they may be a bit fuzzy and out of focus with God's hopes for your divine destiny. Indeed, the precise challenges you regard now as impossible may be the very refinement you need in his eye. Strength and courage are required. Repeatedly, scriptures yoke these attributes of character together, especially when difficult challenges are to be conquered. I love that so much. So the opposite of what's going on is those are things that want to draw us to the spirit, to increase our faith to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, another thing President Nelson says is the answer is always Jesus Christ. So think about how you feel at different times when one of the questions was, how did you win your last battle? Or how did maybe we want to analyze a lost battle? One of the big things is how, what was the lie that you believed? How did you feel while you were believing that lie? Those are like really good tools and techniques to start to battle differently and to get back to peace in the circumstance that you're in. So let's talk about the lie a little bit. One of the fundamental aspects of every satanic spin is the lie that Satan tells us that we believe. That goes back to the lesson last week that not every thought in your mind is a trusted thought. There's going to be a lie. We at Mothers Who Know like to call that a satanic spin. That has become just like part of my common um, phrases anymore. When I know I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling even just off in any way, if I can identify that feeling, I can notice it. I'm like, oh, I'm in a spin. And I know those feelings are going to play towards believing a lie. So I, I like to just make sure I say it's a satanic spin. Last night I was at a book club and, um, I was talking to this couple and their daughter has just struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled. And the my friend's husband said, I just feel so ashamed. I just don't even like to talk about it. I mean, in our culture, in the church, we need to keep things close to our vest. Now, there's truth in that, that we need to, we don't want to um, tell someone else's story. And we as mothers live a lot right there. But I said, always being respectful of those that the story's about. I'm not saying go, you know, spill out someone else's story. But I anymore am so tired of um, not acknowledging where the lie is coming from and calling Satan out. I refuse to let him live in that shadow where people are not calling him out, I say shine a light on, shine a light right on that lie and where it's coming from because it takes the power away from it. And when I can identify, I'm like, oh no, not today, Satan. And I can go back and find how am I feeling and how do I get back to the spirit? I refuse to help him hide. I refuse. That's part of the way that I battle. So what do you think about this question for you? Do you think it's important to gain a testimony of the power of Satan as fast as it is to gain a testimony of the power and intelligence of God? 
just a question because I'm not going to go on a testimony about Satan. We know, though, that President or Elder Holland says, I don't like to talk about the adversary, Satan, the father of all lies, any more than I have to. But he is real. And I think if we can come out and just say, yes, he is real. And I am going to fight because we are in a war. And he's hurting my family members. And I will not help him. I will stand with God. And I do have a testimony of God. I have a testimony that the war rages on. I have a testimony that I know there's an adversary fighting to take out my family. And I know I need to learn to fight differently and better and effectively. But I recognize there is an adversary and his name is Satan. So what's the lie? The lie that comes into our minds as a thought can come really fast or it can linger there for a long time. Those lingering ones, they have a chance um, to get us to build a lot of evidence to prove the lie. So let me explain that. So the first thing that happens is we have a thought that comes into our mind. And it's a point where Satan can inject a lie because he knows how to exploit something that we give emotional meaning to. So if we're going to give emotion to it, we give power to it. That's another way to say it. If we're going to give power to it, that flash, we're going to start to believe. And I'll give you some examples of that in just one second. So if we linger there, we start to believe that thought. We don't identify where it came from. We're going to have a shift in the way we feel. We're going to start to feel worried, fear, agitated, all those things. We're going to start to feel a little off. And then what happens is we call it the filing cabinet. So the filing cabinet, that cabinet opens up and out comes all these files of memories, experiences, um, information that we've gained may not even be information gained from a good place, but all of this information is going to come out. And why does it come out? Because our brains are to keep us smart and to keep us alive. And that's just what they do. We have that emotion. We have that flash, that thought. We're believing that lie. So now we're going to get all this evidence that that lie is true. That's what's going to happen. The problem is all evidence that comes to our mind isn't always accurate. Think about that. We get a lot of evidence that proves the lie. Doesn't mean it's accurate. So we want to notice when that's happening so we can get at the point where we can identify quickly how we're feeling, what's the evidence, and determine, is that really true? Is that accurate? Because memories are just memories, right? And we don't remember a memory in its complete state. It's usually the memory we we can remember how we felt. You're at a family reunion, you had a great time. Oh, remember that family reunion? I remember, and we say that. Or I was at a family reunion and I remember my brother blank de blank to blank to blank. And that made me so mad. That was the worst reunion ever. Both things happened at the same reunion, right? So the information and the memories are true. They're not accurate because they're not telling the whole story. Okay, so Satan loves to open the filing cabinet and show us all the ways things can happen because he wants to induce fear. Every subsequent emotion that gets us deeper into the spin, the satanic spin, is rooted somehow in contention or fear and pain that we feel building up. That's a big thing. If we can find that underlying emotion or contention, we can identify it sooner. We can start to flip it so that we can get out of that satanic spin. The sooner we can notice, the sooner we can fight it, and the sooner we can recover and get out of it. Okay, so here we have, it always starts, every, every one of these spins starts in a mood battle. Okay, so the mood battle happens um, at level two. So what that means is in Eternal Warriors and in Mom Power and in lessons that will go forward, we're going to learn about this um, spin more and there's going to be levels. We only talk about five levels because it can go on beyond that, but when it gets beyond that, it doesn't really matter because we've already 
acted outside our value system and we've already lost. But so level um, one is when we're going to feel the spirit or calm, and then it just keeps increasing. Hang in here with me because we're going to go through this in more detail. Level two is the feeling stage. So that when I say level two, we're now having emotion. So whatever the circumstance is that we're in, we're having emotion. Um, so we call that the mood battle. It happens at level two. And this is the point at which we believe the lie that Satan has injected. And we begin to look for ways to release the pain that is building because of the lie. So we might start thinking like, you know what? They deserve for me to tell them off. They deserve for me to um, slam the door. They deserve whatever it is. Or I deserve now because of that situation. I am now going to go eat a whole cake, a whole box of Oreos, and I'm going to drink a fully loaded Coke with it. Sometimes that's going to make me feel better, but does it? That's where we're believing um, we're at level two. So we can learn how Satan has spun us to level two by looking at past losses. Remember last week, we learned about the truth tool. And so if we can recognize it by level two, level one or level two, we can start to recognize and notice this mood battle. The truth tool is a great way to start to neutralize it and bring it back down. For level two, we can get it back down to a level one. So to refresh your memory, here's the truth tool. Truth tool, terminate the lie. What is the lie? Restore the truth. Who are you? Who are you really? Remember who you are. Restore truth. Unite with God. How can I feel the spirit again? And then we know that our bodies are a gift that we've been given that we fought for. And when we use our body, um, it, there is absolute evidence that we can help take the chemicals that are in the emotional part of our brain, which is the mid part of our brain, and it helps move them to the front lobe of our brain where we can feel the spirit, we can have critical thinking, we can reason. So we want to use our body in some way. Some people like to do dancing. Some people like to write. Some people like to, I like to walk and listen to a podcast. I mean, there's a variety of things, but just using your body. I heard Karen one time say, sometimes all I can do is move my finger. And even doing that on purpose with intention helps to restore the chemicals back to the front lobe. So the other tool, we do this, we wanna go down, the loss battle analysis tool. So let's talk about how we do that. All of us are gonna win sometimes in life, in our situations, and sometimes we're gonna learn. I love that Satan. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, and, or sorry, sometimes we learn. I love that better than Satan, sometimes we lose. So I'm going to, um, we're going to go through a little situation that I had um, just to kind of review this, but to do a loss battle analysis. So after a loss, a certain amount of anger, disappointment is appropriate, but if it builds the individual towards determination instead of hopelessness, um, sorry, if it builds the individual towards determination instead of hopelessness. So when we do a loss battle analysis, we're doing it so we can learn. We're not doing it so then we can feel worse about ourselves, right? Because we're here in mortality to learn and to grow. So all we want to do is use that tool so that we can learn to be better. So the next time that situation arises, we're like, aha, I see thee now. Thou art Lucifer. I'm going to battle this. Um, and we can we can behave in a different way, in a more elevated way. So during a loss battle, battle analysis, it's helpful to review the video. So here we go. Now blast is up here because oftentimes when we're in a mood battle, one of these emotions is going to be in play. And this blast is an acronym. So it could be like bored, lazy, lonely, anxious, angry, sad, tired, 
those are just words that we put to it just to kind of help. I'm going to tell you that every time I've done a lost battle analysis, and I think, how was I feeling before I'm one of these? My favorite one is anxious. I, I just lean towards being really anxious. And then when I think, well, what am I anxious about? That helps me. But a lot of times also I'm tired, you know, or sick, right? If we're in a compromised state in our physical body, we're going to be more susceptible to believing the lie and the thought that has been dropped into our mind. So at level two is the pain buildup. It's the I feel stage. If we can notice how we feel right there at level two, we're going to be more successful of bringing it down. So we want to always notice, just notice how am I feeling? A lot of us are accustomed to avoiding uncomfortable feelings, but it's so important for us to be present and to notice how we're feeling. The buildup from level two to level three experienced when there is an increasing amount of legitimacy given to one or more of the negative feelings. So level two is where we believe the lie. So think about what is your Achilles heel? What is your favorite lie to believe about yourself? That's where Satan's going to keep playing. So a lot of us, um, it's going to be our mothering, you know, am I, did I do that right? I'm a failure. I shouldn't have done that. That should have and shouldn't thing, right? Um, really critical, guilt-ridden, agitation. I mean, just think about what yours is. Um, if they, these are ways that we could have acted outside our value system. And I just came up with these because this is what I do. But you think of what yours is. I'm just being exposing myself so much here. But if I, if they didn't do blank, then I wouldn't have had to do blank. I mean, like, well, if they didn't do this, then I wouldn't have had to go yell at them. There was one time when, um, this is a really horrible story. My son was little and he had gotten a, a pocket knife and I was a single mom at the time. And we were really tight on money. And he took that pocket knife and he stabbed the couch. I mean, he just like stabbed the heck out of that couch. And I was so mad at him. And I just thought you deserve to have something of yours ruined too. So I walked over and he had this little trolley that he'd gotten from San Francisco, a trip. <laughs> and I stomped on it. Well, if he didn't, if he didn't punch my couch with his knife, I wouldn't have had to stomp on his trolley. I hope you all heard the lie in there. <laughs> Well, another one is you're never going to get all this done. You're, there's too much on your plate. You're never going to get it done. There's not enough time. No one understands the pressure. Or here's, here's some of my favorite ones too. I'm not really that lovable. I'm a failure. I'm stupid. And my favorite one is I'm invisible. You hear the lies in that? So... That's where the satanic spin gets me. So let's talk about that. So the zero is when we're calm. Pretty much, maybe we feel this throughout the day. We can bounce around through the day. We, this can, we can go through the spin in, in seconds, in moments. We can spin around many, many, many times in a day. In Even in a minute, we can spin around many times. Okay, so... But the zero is the calm. Then we start to have a shift. We just feel a little off. If we can train ourselves to notice when we're just a little bit off, oh, that's a big win. That's a big win. But two is the I feel stage. So start to understand what feelings are and how you're feeling. Um, there's a wheel that you can get online and it gives you a plethora of emotions. I love to pull those up and look at them. Because some are, are more individual to me that I go to more than others. So I feel when you're feeling something, you're at a level two. So remember the blast. Remember bored, lazy, lonely, angry, anxious, sad, stressed, scared, tired. Somehow you're physically compromised. So then the, the three is, hey, guess what? You should just go do this. You deserve to do that. So I was thinking, 
of um, a situation that happened to me this week. I was just called as Relief Society president. So let's think about my emotions. Overwhelmed. I feel like I don't have enough time. I feel like I'm not going to measure up. I feel like the Lord's not going to be happy with me. I feel like everyone's going to hate me. I hope you're hear hearing lies in that, just being very vulnerable. Well, part of my personality is I believe if we can establish um, a foundation of order, then we can go about the business that we need to be going about. And to me, what I felt so prompted um, in this calling is every one person in my ward is important. Every one. How can every one be seen? And how can we help them feel loved and seen by their Savior, Jesus Christ? And we all need a community. How do we do that? So last Sunday, I was sitting in church and I noticed, I just pulled out my phone and I um, opened up the list of women and I took role at sacrament meeting. I was shocked that 50, at least 50% weren't there and I didn't even know who they were. I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen them. Half, at least half were missing. And I was like, where, where are they? Where are they? Not trying to judge them, but out of concern. If, if everyone is important and the most important thing that we can do is be about gathering Israel, where is my Israel in this ward? Where are they at? So now back to, I think we need to have a foundation first. So there's all these tasks. I know many of you have probably been really study president before where you want to have a schedule of the Sunday lessons. We need to have a schedule of activities. We need to have a schedule for what we're doing for missionary work. And it goes on and on. So I like to have a, a calendar that we can pivot from, but it's order. So that way, if someone's missing, we know what's going on. But the whole purpose is, how are we finding the ones? So the activities, how do they help us find the ones? How do we, how do, we do that? The Sunday lessons, how do we help get them to the ones, right? To every one. So I, I asked the counselors, um, who are over those things. Can we get a calendar? Can you get, um, at least for Sunday, we'll take the Sunday lesson as the example. We just had conference, so let's get six months. And the teachers, if if you feel impressed, they can pick their own conference talks, but have them pick them and let's get them on the calendar. I noticed the counselor kept not doing it. So I was like, I wonder why she's not doing that. That's so easy to do. So I started to feel kind of frustrated and then as a couple of weeks go, went by and she said well next week we don't even have a teacher I'm like so so do you need names I mean what are you thinking about that she goes well, I don't know what do you want me to do I'm like well I want you to get a sub so she goes well then who should I call so I'm like okay I'll help you look for names not thinking anyway still nothing happened so I started to feel like this hey what is the problem here? I need to really just have a, a word with her. I was getting super frustrated. So I, I text, you know, and I was like, hey, do you have that done? I started to kind of get a little um, deliberate in the text. Like, so let me know when that's done. So how are, how are we doing? Do you, how can I empower you to get that done? that type of stuff. And I felt justified in kind of putting the pressure on because she should have been doing it. Should have been doing it. Okay. So I didn't ever really act outside my value system, but I got a little intense. So now we're doing the lost battle analysis. So the, we're just going to go with the, the text got, we're a little bit of pressure, right? So if I'm going to analyze now what happened, where did the irrational conversation come from? Came, come from? Well, I was believing that she just wasn't doing it, that she wasn't supporting me. She didn't see the vision. Um, this is going to all be a failure. That's the lie that I was feeling. That was the, and then before that, hey, she should be doing that. Okay. Well, when did I feel the spirit last? 
I felt the spirit when the spirit prompted me and showed me that everyone was important and gave me this increased love. Now, let me tell you, I finally did go sit down and I said, what, what is it that I'm missing? Can you, can you help me be better? Can you help me be a better support to you? What, what really do I need to do to help this happen? Because the importance of a schedule is that then we can get the newsletter out. The women that aren't attending can see what the um, talk is that we're going to do, and they can at least be aware. If they want to read it, they can. But it keeps people informed. And I gave her this whole vision of the one. And then she goes, brace yourself, ladies. I can't see your faces, but they might have shock and horror when you hear this. She said, well, I never knew really that was my responsibility. Did you tell us exactly what our responsibilities were that's why she wasn't doing it she's like why do you keep bugging me about this I, is it that's that my job so in my mind yes I did tell her but did I really sit down and carefully go over and help us strategize together how we want that to look no I didn't so the error was me so that's a lost battle but did I learn I've learned I've had to apologize I've had to go to my Heavenly Father and apologize, and I just want to be better, right? So this loss of battle analysis, sorry, is so important to help us notice when did we feel the Spirit last? How am I feeling now? I wish I would have noticed it at two. I'm starting to feel this way and had that conversation, but it was like, hey, I went to three. Hey, she deserves to kind of get... um. A little written about this because hello why wouldn't we and then the pressure right okay i hope that explains it um there's a great youtube that comes out and it's by tiffany webster and the church supports this video and it's the lie and it's one of the biggest lies that we as women love to buy into it's if there's me and if i do more if I keep doing more, that's going to equal I'm being Christ-like, but it's a lie because the truth is there's me. And if I yoke myself with Christ, that's going to equal more. So how am I going to be able to reach everyone in my ward? I'm not. That's the truth. I'm not. No matter how much more I do, isn't going to make me reach every woman in my ward and make me more Christ-like. It's a lie. But if I'm yoked with Christ and every morning I say, who is it that you want me to go see today? How can I help thee today? How can we be about your business today? How can I be of help with you? That will equal more because it's his business. It's not my business. So Jesus Christ takes broken things and broken pe people and makes them far greater through his transformation transformative power and so with christ we are enough and i know i've said this so many times but um, i love this trick so much when i'm feeling invisible or i'm feeling like a failure if i change it to we i can hear the lie i'm a failure i've ruined this well we're a failure meaning me and christ we've ruined this you can hear the lie it's not true so what do i what's my responsibility to make sure i'm actively a participant in the we and listening and noticing the spirit so i can hear what the lord wants me to do as i'm yoked with him and the way to reframe your circumstance and to care for yourself when you're noticing okay i'm not feeling well something must be going on here there's a lie in here somewhere something's going on here so if i can find it and the way to find it literally is just to start writing down your thoughts so maybe your top three stewardships what are some of the things you're hearing about those things and often things will come out i'm not okay i'm kind of scared that's not working out what if this happens right all those kinds of things also, some truth will come out and we can differentiate that by maybe drawing a line down the piece of paper and saying, 
This sounds like it might be coming from the enemy, and this sounds like it might be coming from the spirit. So sorry about the advertising. I just wanted the video of her sweet words. I think it's so perfect. So think about what Christ is saying. He says, bring me what you have wherever you are, and I will meet you where you are and transform you. I love that so much. And this week, I've seen so much evidence of that as I have reached out to women who I don't know. And every one but one, I'm finding the ones that I don't know that aren't at church, right, has said, you can come meet with me, but I don't want to be at church and I don't want you to talk about it. Every single one. And um, you know what? I just know in my heart, and it's been testified to me, that no matter where they are, they are important to their Savior. So I'm not going over there to try to do anything other than love. Just love, love, love right where they are. Notice the Spirit and try to stay right there. I think that's all that's expected and all I can do because I know the Savior loves that sister so much more than I, so much more. So anyway, here we go. Your greatest weakness will be the point at which Satan will try to tempt you, will try to win you. And if you have made yourself weak, he will add to that weakness. So BJ, will you get me some, I need three readers. Yes, let's see. Uh, Nancy, would you read? And Michelle, would you read? And Rhonda, are you okay to help read? Thank you so much. And Debbie, just for later, we do have some things that people have put in the chat as far Excellent. as your question about why do I stay on the covenant or path. Yeah. And let's just remind, if it's coming to your mind even right now, just keep on writing or something even different. Like, oh, and I also stay on because of this. Put it in. That's awesome. So okay. Okay. I think Nancy was first. Mm -hmm. You can be right by doing wrong and you can't be wrong by doing right. President yeah. Monson. You can't be right by doing wrong and you can't be wrong by doing right. Mm -hmm. So cool, isn't it? Okay, here's the next one. Who was it, BJ? Michelle. Okay. Michelle. Satan is a master of manipulating emotions through the vicious whisperings he has perfected with practice on billions of our predecessors. He knows how to create worry and doubt, fear, hatred, resentment, and jealousy, stress, anger, lust, depression, feelings of emptiness, and loneliness, etc. Have you ever felt angry in the last week? Have you felt lonely or misunderstood? Have you felt anxiety or fear, doubt, resentment, depression, rebellion, the desire to retreat from life's challenges? No, such feelings come from above. You have been under the influence of powerful demonic spirits who know how to trigger your self-defeating emotions and thought patterns and then launch and rejoice at your misery from um, Stephen A. Kramer putting on the armor of God. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like when we see, look at our families and we're like, he's attacked my family. He's attacked my loved ones. And then we start to feel all those triggering emotions. Satan's laughing. That's something that makes me fight even more. That's where I say, you are not going to hide in that shadow over there. I'm calling you out. I'm in the fight. So again, you think of that blast, the bored, lazy, lonely, angry, all those ones that we had said before. Have you felt anxiety, fear, doubt, resentment, depression, rebellion, the desire to retreat? No such feelings come from above. I love that so much. Okay. And then we had. Rhonda, this is the scripture. Okay, it's second Nephi 4. Never, nevertheless, in God I trust. When we shift the mood battle, we shift to build trust in God. Mm, isn't that awesome? So we have to notice how we're feeling. Notice, are we feeling the spirit? 
and notice what lie we're believing. If we're noticing those things and we nevertheless, I, in God, I trust that helps us have peace in our circumstance, even when it's not going to change at this time. Right. Okay. Here we have our it's amazing what happens here at Mothers You Know. It's not like we all just hunker down and take this deep look at these really incredible principles. It's like we take a look at ourselves underneath the gospel of Jesus Christ with a heightened awareness of how important it is to know how to self-regulate, how to fill the spirit so that the adversary doesn't have more power because he does have the power to influence our thoughts. It's just amazing how edifying it is to hear what each other's language is in describing these things that we're understanding through the spirit together. Something we are pretty dedicated to here and it is to, to testify that we already have all the truths that we need in the gospel of Jesus Christ, but knowing how to apply them when there's an enemy so determined to make sure that we don't understand how to connect with Christ or keep the spirit or have our identity intact. Mm, well said, Karen. It's amazing. Oh, there we go. Okay, BJ, I have one more quote for you to read by Jeffrey R. Holland. Okay, to anybody struggling today, I say, be hopeful, be happy, and smile. Remember that God is on your side. He is not an angry, vicious God trying to trip you. He is your father. He is anxious to do everything possible to bless you. Mm, I love that. And I hope you noticed how you feel when BJ read that. Because when we hear truth, our spirit will feel it. So if you came in today struggling, be hopeful, happy, and smile. Even if the circumstance seems so hard we can still be hopeful because we believe in our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the atonement of Jesus Christ. So therefore, we can be happy and we have so much to smile about. So this is a slide from um, this lesson. It's for Mom Power. It says, power, proven, obedient women, empowered and restored. And these are some wonderful um, things that we can think about that help us we know our theme, Stay by the Tree, and we remember Lehi, um, that he didn't jump in a misty water. He didn't get caught up in the great and spacious building and those making fun and mocking and judging. He stayed by the tree. Sometimes he would call out loudly, and sometimes he stood still, but he always invited those that he loved to come and partake of the tree, the fruit of the tree, which is our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then we just need to remember, as we notice, that some of our things that are going on are our business, and some of the things going on, they it isn't our business. So know your lane and stay in your lane. And when you stay there, you can stay by the Savior, Jesus Christ. When we get into someone else's lane, you'll notice, you'll start to feel agitated, and you'll have that level three, hey moment, they deserve this, or I because of this, I need to go do that. Just the spirit. The real battle is, do we have the spirit? The spirit will provoke our mind and our mouth if needed. It's always the real battle is to have the spirit. When we have the spirit, we win every battle. Stay in your truth. What do you believe? Why are you on that covenant path? Stay in your truth. Always remember him. Prayer thoughts. Uh, power is Pray, write, read. That's that journal. Pray, write, and read. What we put into our mind is what we're going to think. And you are all atmosphere angels. Um, we want to do good things. We want to be about the Lord's business. And we want to help those that we love that our paths cross. So um, this is our final slide. And it's a declaration statement. And so I invite you, if you haven't done it, to take some time in your journal to write a declaration. And it's, why do you walk the covenant path? We're going to read what is in the chat, which I can see there are so many, and I love that so much. 
Um, but notice something amazing. So many things happened amazing at conference. But Emily Bell Freeman gave a declaration and she read it to us. And it was why she walks in the covenant path. So noticing helps me to remember my Savior and recognize his strength in my life. So I'm going to go ahead and read Emily Bell Freeman's declaration statement. She said at the end of her talk, I walk this path as a beloved daughter of heavenly parents, divinely known and deeply trusted. As a child of the covenant, I am eligible to receive promised blessings. I have chosen to walk with the Lord. I have been called to stand as a witness of Christ. When the path feels overwhelming, I am strengthened with enabling grace. Each time I cross the threshold of his house, I experience deeper covenant relationship with him. I am sanctified with his spirit, endowed with his power, and set apart to build his kingdom. Through a process of daily repentance and weekly partaking of the sacrament, I am learning to become steadfast and to go about doing good. I walk this path with Jesus Christ, looking forward to the promised day when he will come again. Then I will be sealed his and lifted up as a holy daughter of God. I love that so much. Okay, let me stop the share. Loved, loved what you all shared. Thanks for your presence. Just one one last note that that I, um, if it's okay if I add, sometimes when we talk about Satan, for some reason that can feel scary to people. I've noticed in several groups of of women when that discussion comes up, they just think, "Oh, let's not talk about that. That scares me to know that to know about him more, to know of his personal attacks. It just, um, anyway, I just love, um, considering the idea and the truth that, um, that, that Debbie brought up right in one of those last slides, just as far as, um, instead of being paralyzed by that reality of his, you know, the realizing that reality, just remembering that Satan is no match for the savior. He never has been, he never will be. And we don't just have those other, you know, his voices. We also have the, the savior's help. And I know, I love how Debbie just directed us to that truth, but I think sometimes we can let that slip off and just feel like, oh my gosh, how are we going <laughs> to fight against this? Oh, we are, because when we're connected with the savior, there's nothing we can't fight or do. Um, you just connected with the biggest superpower, you know, available. And, and it's so neat to have that. Our co the covenant path just helps us carefully connect with him. And I love just remembering that, that they that be with us are so much more than they that be with them. It's such a truth. And so just, let's just keep that in mind if we feel like, Oh, that feels scary or powerful or too much. Um, just that awareness helps us so much. And if I can just share one more situation that came up, um, as Debbie talked about just what the spin looks like, it, it brought me back to, um, a situation that happened just a few days ago. My husband and I spent some time on a, um, on a cruise over the past 10 days and, um, at one of the ports, I had my glasses hanging inside my shirt and I really started to need my glasses a lot, especially, um, in darker, you know, set settings. I can't see very well at all. And, um, I had them on my, around my hooked into my shirt and we were driving around and it was about time to get back on the boat. And, you know, those boats do not stay and wait for people. They go when, when they're ready to go, they go. And if you get left in port, you'll figure it out how to, get, how to, how to find your way home. But, um, I noticed that my glasses were missing and I recalled, oh, I had them here and here and here and, oh boy, the ship's supposed to leave in 30 minutes. And, and I thought, you know what, I might have dropped him in the garbage with that sack I had with some little garbage in it and back there a five minute walk back. And I just told my husband, Hey, 
I'm going to run back to that garbage can, just check there and make sure they weren't there. And, and I dug in the garbage can with all the people wondering what I was doing and, and the glasses were not in there. And I just thought, Oh, I only have a few minutes. And, um, and, and then I remembered, Oh, I pulled my jacket off in that store. And, um, I bet they came off in that store back there. Well, um, I called the store. I called the person that was driving us around. I called the, uh, nobody could see him. Nobody could find him. And so, you know, Debbie talked about those feelings, you know, that being blasted, those, um, anxious being one of them. And I was feeling really anxious and I, and I just kept going in that spin. And then I started pulling out the file cabinet of, oh, who can I blame for this? Or what my husband should have been stayed with me, you know, even though he didn't know anything about all that I pulled off my jacket. I, um, he, he never supports me. And then I pulled all the files out of all the little things where he might've been flawed or misstepped or see my husband's not good enough and he's not helpful enough and not supportive enough. And I even sent him a text saying it would have been nice that if you would have cared about me and, but, you know, <laughs> anyway, um, and he didn't even know. We thought he was going to look in the garbage can and come back and get on the ship. But all the while, um, um, the invitation was there to make him the enemy and to put a wedge in our relationship and to, and um, I was grateful that not all the time I'm able to do this, but I was able to say, you know what? You weren't to blame when I, I he said, I got your text <laughs> when I finally got back to the ship and and I I just said you know what I was trying to blame you I and this wasn't your fault and this and there I should have asked for help if I you know was needing it and you didn't anyway I just you can um it's so nice to raise our awareness of when like like Debbie said I'm not gonna let Satan sit in the shadows he was trying to be involved in that and trying to create contention there and just maybe saying, sorry, I was wrong in that. You know, you do love me and support me. And it's a powerful tool. It comes up nonstop during the day with our kids, our neighbors, our, you know, think about where is it trying to come up for you? Where is he trying to place fear, contention, or, um, or wedges? And let's not go for that. Let's enlist the Savior's help and just say, help me to see this better. Help me bring some clarity to this and just involve him instead of just sit and stew. You know, a lot of times that's what I'll do. I'll just stew and stew and stew. And, but we can involve him, right? We can just simply ask, can you br help bring some clarity to here? And then maybe pick up a pencil and make a, a, li a little note. I'm, I'm ready to hear what you have to say. I'm available. And then just act on those things if they feel like they're um, motivating or inspiring or, um, or mending or, um, they're from the spirit. And so, um, we can easily recognize whether they're from the spirit or from Satan, you know, just by those things, Satan is only involved in discouraging, dividing. Um, and sometimes we are corrected by the spirit, right? Sometimes the spirit is like, I, you, you shouldn't have blamed him you ought to go say sorry, you know, it's, <laughs> and the correcting is also filled with um, love and inspiration, you know, it's not filled with um, shame and discouragement. So anyway, thanks for bringing that up, Debbie, it was so nice to consider, I'm sure many of you were considering some of your own circumstances, as Debbie shared, just how we can look at this notice, just notice lesson and use some of those tools that she talked about. And send us off with some um, little bit of final information about things that are things that are happening with uh, mothers who know and just some other things. So, so today, like Debbie mentioned, in about thirty minutes at eleven o'clock Mountain Time, Anelody Milne will be joining us for Warrior Mothers Who Know. You can find that link 
by just going to motherswhoknow.org and looking under the support tab for Warrior Mothers Who Know meeting. And the, the link will be right there on that page. So she, um, Anelody is the director of the Daughters of Light program and Warrior Women of Light program. She's a therapist for life-changing services and, and has a lot to say about um, women and young women. So Anyway, if you have, if you're having some questions with things like that, or just other things that are happening in your life right now, I know she'd be willing to um, just share her thoughts on that. And we'll plan to have a spirit led discussion there. Now, the, the last Tuesday of the month is our fifth Tuesday, and we're going to be joined by Emily Cox. You might have, you might remember her because she's presented at one of our um, special webinar series, but um, Emily is also one of Karen Broadhead's neighbors and friends. And so that's, that's really fun too. And so she's going to, the topic she's going to present on is why don't you love her? A journey from self-harm to unconditional love. And so Emily's super kind to share some of her personal journey and story. And so you can go, you can find out a little bit more about Emily and the work that she does by going to her website. That's gatherbuildprotect.com. That's her website. You can go to, to maybe just say, oh, who is this Emily? And, but she'll be coming to present that day. That's just a free, um, a free group and a free, um, free class that will be offered. And then also there's a, a special podcast series that's happening right now. And you'll find the episodes on mothers who know, and the light dragons, did they fight podcast channels? It's the breaking the chains of pornography, arming parents, leaders, and youth with powerful truths and tools. So they will be uh, just highlighting those things as well as the Sons of Helaman and Menoroni programs offered through life-changing services. You'll be able to find episode three of this series, which is titled A Christ-Centered Journey to Self-Mastery. Um, and that you'll find that on our podcast channel um, with that special series. But that this, this um, specific uh, episode has Brighton Peterson, along with his parents, Lisa and Lloyd Peterson. Lisa is the office manager for life-changing services, and her son, Brighton, attended the Sons of Helaman program, and he has quite the lengthy journey and story with his um, participation in the Sons of Helaman program, but he is now a, a therapist and does uh, for life-changing services, so that's just a, a fun to see that go full, full circle, but he's been very generous to talk about his journey as well, and then um, if you have, if you don't have this, this book or this ebook it's called like dragons, did they fight lots of the things that even we've talked about today are, are in this book. And, and so it has been such a great help as far as self mastery, like how do we do things that are wise instead of things that we just want to do or feel like doing how do we line up with our value, um, the values we have in a, in a more edifying, elevated way? And so you can put your camera up to that QR code. And uh, you can also find it in on the uh, lifechangingservices.org website, but you can get a free e-copy of that book. So feel free to, to share that. It's not just a book about overcoming pornography or um it also just, it's a book that lots of people are like, okay, this is called um, how to elevate my life and live according to my values. And, and anyway, people have just loved this book in, in so many areas. So, and also we just want you to know that this is available as you work with church leaders or are a church leader to please know that there's a church leader tab on lifechangingservices.org that has so many different resources and helps for leaders. So it's a great one to point to if you're thinking, I'd like to share life-changing services with my bishop. I don't know how to do that or what. You can just go to that um, go to that page on the website and just forward it. And and anyway, it's just a, it's nice to have that great help. So remember to um, please like and follow and subscribe, subscribe to us on our different places that you can find us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, our um, 
our YouTube channel, which is getting just new things added to it all the time that are super helpful, like those little clips that Debbie shared today in our lesson. So aren't those awesome little nuggets and just powerful little um, packed clips? So I just wanted you to know you can find those there as well as our podcast channel. So thanks so much, everyone, for being here today with us. Kind of you to stay and listen. Debbie, thanks for um, being willing to prepare and teach. And anyway, love seeing all your names and faces. You're, they're needed here. Thank you, everyone.